Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you all for uh, for coming out on on such a lovely day. Uh, it's always kind of uh, sporty to uh, you know set an event for a beautiful Friday afternoon, um, and particularly I know for a lot of students, uh, exam weeks are coming up and the semester is closing down, and and uh, so there's lots of other other uh, distractions. Um, but this is also, as many of you know, sort of Golden Week uh, in the Japanese calendar. Uh, when Washington is visited by by many many important people from Tokyo, who who have a hard time getting away any other time, uh, so uh, we uh, we learn to appreciate uh, appreciate this time of year. Um, it's my real uh, distinct personal pleasure. I know people say that a lot, but it really is a uh, personal pleasure to uh, introduce uh, uh, Miss Motoko uh, Mizuno uh, of the Japanese Diet, the Upper House uh, Councilors. Uh, the Constitutional Democratic Party of Japan. Some people are surprised that there is more than just the LDP. Uh, yes, there is the Constitutional Democratic Party of Japan. Um, and the reason why it's a particular pleasure is uh, is uh, 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 Mizuno Sensei has been with uh, JAXA for many, many years. In fact, we first met, I think, 2019, 2010, 2010. Oh, right. 28 years. But, I don't know, it's so old. Um, uh, but uh, yes, we met when we were children, um, and uh, so we grew up together. Um, but uh, uh, so uh, when she was at Jackson, of course, we had uh, uh, a, a number of long uh, interactions, and uh, I, I've taken particular pride, even though I have nothing to do with it, uh, but particular pride in uh, seeing uh, her decide to go into public life and uh, run for office. I think this you this was your third attempt. Yes. Okay, so try number three. It's like joining the astronaut corps, you know, the first attempt, second attempt, ah, third attempt, so successful. Um, and so I, I think that uh, uh, I take a particular amount of pride uh, in her achievement there. Um, as uh, as typical for a, a new um, new member of the diet, she, she's pulled a variety of assignments. Um, but uh, in addition to, um, uh, of course, her interest in space, she's on the research committee on Foreign Affairs and National Security, uh, matters associated with Okinawa and uh, Northern problems, uh, certainly not, uh, uh, certainly very difficult uh, sort of issues. Um, and so she brings though a wide variety of both legal and space uh, backgrounds, uh, plus an interest in reforms, I think for uh, Japanese society uh, generally. And uh, I think I'll just stop there and turn it over to her uh, to, uh, to give her presentation. I'll we'll have time for discussion. Coco, please. Thank you very much for uh, your kind uh, kind explanation for my career and uh, myself. Uh, thank you, Scott. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, my name is uh, Motoko Mizuno. My last name is Motoko and my family name is Mizuno. And then uh, I have been worked for uh, JAXA, Japanese Space Agency for 28 years. And now last from last July, I became the uh, member, one of the member house of councils and so new newcomer to this new world and then so today i'm very happy uh, to be here uh, to share uh, japanese uh, recent situation of space policy and law and this first page is my uh, kind of uh, my background uh, to be a politician so here i first time for me to make presentation uh, making questionnaires to prime minister kishida here and then you may, you can see here and then uh, this is, um, I, I have been a long time uh, engaged in space station cooperation, like with Lance uh, and NASA friend. And then, uh, then I felt uh, maybe uh, we need reform of the policy uh, in Japan for uh, creating innovation, uh, uh, making industry more competitive, compete in industry or something like that. And also I have two kids. Now this is uh, my, uh, uh, 10 years ago. So now I have a boy and girl, uh, one is junior high and one is prime primary school and then uh, in Japan uh, still it's very difficult for uh, for uh, parents especially for women uh, uh, fostering uh, kids and together with working so that is uh, because you know Jack in Japan and uh, now we are suffering from the uh, uh, the the number of the babies uh, decreasing 
But still, we have the challenges, problem of education or uh, uh, fostering the kids. Uh, the uh, environment is not so good. So I, this is my my uh, uh, kind. Of, it's a space in Japanese space and mother. So I have uh, the political purpose to reform for space field, and also as a mother, I would like to change the environment uh, for the uh, better life in Japan. So this is my uh, twenty uh, my um, background of myself. I was born in nineteen seventy, and then graduated from University of Tokyo, uh, the Bachelor of Law and especially interested in international law. And just after the graduation, I entered into NASDA. You may know, uh, former uh, NASDA, and now became into JAXA. And the, uh, three agencies merged into JAXA. And then the one is uh, NASDA, uh, which is, uh, after, uh, I will uh, explain later. I'm sorry, my English is my, <laughs> sometimes not uh, uh, enough to be well understood. Uh, I will try, uh, but uh, sorry for my English is not enough. Uh, so I uh, entered into 1994, I entered into the National Space Development Agency uh, for my NASA, and then uh, especially for uh, international uh, cooperation, uh, especially for space station. And then after the negotiation concluded uh, for government agreement for Space Station. I was invited to the Ministry for Foreign Affairs for uh, getting ratification of diet, a diet approval for Space Station Agreement. So I was there uh, for two years in Ministry for Foreign Affairs, uh, especially for Space Station and Space uh, International Cooperation and the other uh, scientific cooperation. And then uh, I uh, uh, went to uh, Leiden in Netherlands, uh, study a master course for international law. Uh, so that is what uh, I was, uh, I'm uh, a little bit interested in the reform of United Nations or uh, for the peacekeeping, peace ma peacemaking, more, more uh, better function in United Nations or better, uh, better solution by international law, uh, like ICJ in Hague or something like that. Uh, that is what, uh, one of my background or uh, today's uh, political uh, activity. And then uh, after coming back from the Leiden, uh, I uh, dispatched, I, I uh, became the member for the space station team. And <laughs> Uh, together with Lance and NASA friend, uh, uh, we uh, uh, proceed a space station cooperation, and uh, especially for promotion and for commercial use, so uh, various use, utilization of space station. And at the time, Lance uh, headed by Lance, uh, uh, NASA, uh, and the NASA's leadership for commercialization group. I was a member from Japan together with Lance. And and then uh, this is kind of the first step, uh, first phase of JAXA to promote uh, utilization, especially for commercial purposes. And firstly, starting in space station and then becoming the general uh, activity to promote uh, commercialization or commercial utilization. So new uh, in 2003, uh, JAXA established uh, three agencies, NASDA, ISAS, and NAR, uh, become into JAXA and start uh, so JAXA uh, newly started in 2003, and at that time, one new department, it is for uh, in, uh, uh, cooperation with industry. So now I moved to uh, this new di division for uh, more uh, promotion for commercial utilization, and not only space station, but for the segment of space asset uh, JAX, uh, JAX, uh, in JAXA. And then uh, basically my uh, career is uh, industrialization, uh, international, and then uh, uh, cooperation with industry and legal services. So uh, I, after that, I became into international relations and then, and then uh, newly uh, established uh, legal, div legal division. I had, I, I was heading legal division, and then you may know that now it, we concluded the U.S.-Japan framework agreement for space cooperation. Uh, I was uh, involved in negotiation, uh, but in my uh, time, I could not uh, conclude the negotiation. But finally, uh, uh, it concluded, and now is under the uh, review of Japanese diet now. 
And then after that, I, uh, I moved to the aviation uh, division. So unfortunately, I, our Mitsubishi regional jet was not successful, but uh, JAXA also supported from a technical viewpoint that kind of business uh, of uh, commercial flight in Japan, but it, it was not successful. Uh, it's, it's very pity. And then, uh, and then my final task in, in JAXA was kind of economic uh, security. Uh, that is, uh, you may know, uh, uh, in Japan, not only uh, uh, national security, but we need uh, economic security. Uh, that means uh, we need uh, more national strategy uh, for uh, national industry. So, and then uh, that means uh, we need kind of control for information. Uh, uh, so, uh, so that is uh, uh, my task was to uh, to create a regime in JAXA for more control for the uh, information sharing with uh, other agency like that, and then yeah, I I uh, tried. Uh, elections uh, three times and finally <laughs> I elected as a upper upper um, uh, house in last last July. So. Today, uh, I, I, today's uh, topic is for the uh, space policy in, in Japan is now changing, but uh, I briefly would like to share uh, Japanese uh, history of Japanese aerospace activities and the development of uh, space law in, in Japan. First. So you may know uh, after the World War II uh, in Japan, uh, we could not uh, we could, it is not allowed. It was not allowed to do uh, R and D and manufacturing uh, concerning uh, uh, aircraft or space object for seven about seven years. So that was uh, uh, the one reason why our uh, aviation industry is not strong uh, still now. And then, but. After uh, that period, uh, uh, University of Tokyo, for research purposes, uh, Professor Itokawa started a very small <laughs> launcher and it succeed in uh, 1955. Pencil rocket success is fa first step for Japan uh, for space activities, but which is not uh, from industry perspective. This is which is uh, purely uh, activity for research purposes in university. And then in 1955, uh, National Aeronautical Laboratory, NAR, which is one uh, origin of JAXA, today's JAXA, uh, established. Uh, that the purpose is to, uh, to re, re establish Japanese industry for aircraft because of the seven years gap after World War II. Before World War II, we, we did have a good industry for aircraft manufacturing, but after that, uh, it laid behind the uh, global market. So uh, government uh, uh, tried to uh, set a testing facility for industry for aircraft manufacturing. So that is a purpose, uh, first, uh, <laughs> main purpose of establishment of, of uh, NAR uh, in Tokyo. And in 1996, uh, uh, this is a new agency uh, in the government, science and technology agency. Today, um, uh, the origin of mixed, one, one origin of mixed, management of the education ministry and then uh, STA became, in, become, became into uh, mixed. And the science and technology agency, uh, which uh, mainly cover uh, for space and nuclear uh, R&D. And then they say um, some politician uh, thought uh, the reason why we failed the war we uh, that was the lack of the technology, and after World War, uh, they they thought um, we need uh, uh, not attacking, but we need uh, uh, competing technology uh, for space, which is similar technology, rocket similar technology to missile. We do not. Uh, attacking by the rocket, <laughs> but we, it is good to have the uh, launcher and then also nuclear technology. That was, uh, uh, I heard that uh, some uh, 
uh, purposes of uh, creating science and technology agency that that the political reason they uh, they thought uh, they thought, they say and then but this is uh, you may know japanese uh, uh, starting point is very slow because you know 1970 Nine already the Sputnik and then US USSR uh, already started the space races, but uh, our we started uh, uh, space and space activities very slow. So we have to uh, we try to catch up <laughs> that kind of technology. And then 1964, uh, this is. Uh, ISAS, the starting point of ISAS. But before ISAS, the University of Tokyo already uh, initiated that kind of activity, but that, that is not space uh, department. But newly is established uh, in University of Tokyo uh, Institute of Space and Aeronautical Science in, in 90, uh, 1964. Then this is one, ISAS, NAR, and the NASA became into JAXA. So uh, ISAS uh, uh, coming first, and then uh, NASDA follows uh, for industry uh, uh, industry promotion. Uh, ISAS is for uh, research mainly uh, by the university, and then after that, uh, NASDA uh, created in 1969 uh, under uh, SDA uh, to uh, to promote uh, technology for industry. And but at that time, NASA uh, established by the government. So uh, there, uh, the, the, to establish NASA, there is there uh, is NASA law. NASA law uh, uh, was uh, decided by the Diet. And at that time, one resolution attached to NASA law. Uh, so NASA uh, can only uh, pursue activity for. Non-military, non-military activity that is uh, narrower than uh, our constitutional law. Uh, constitutional law that a little bit wider. Uh, non-military means we never, Ajax, NASA never uh, contribute with uh, Ministry of uh, Defense or uh, Japanese Self-Defense Force. So that is kind of. Uh, uh, reservation, kind of limitation for NASA, uh, and then. 1970, uh, the first uh, Japanese uh, domestic satellite Osumi was launched uh, first uh, launched by Japanese domestic launcher by ISIS. So we uh, Japan became a uh, fourth country uh, successfully launch uh, its uh, domestic satellite by domestic launcher. I I think that our nation. Uh, uh, I think that is that is great. Very short short period. Of, uh, our ancestor <laughs> uh, succeed, uh, tried hard to catch up with that technology. Very hard. hard. I think that great great effort and great success. And then uh, sorry, the sorry, because <laughs> okay. here is a time for space station. I'm sorry, this is a, a, a coming to my age of nineteen eighty eight. I'm as I uh, still I'm not in NASA, but the uh, 1988 agreement for ISS, uh, <clears throat> the features, uh, kind of uh, activity under the Cold War, uh, you may know, uh, this is uh, uh, International Space Station uh, separately uh, against for the Mir space station under USSR. So starting point of space station, my understanding is uh, kind of, uh, Western side space station and then Eastern side space station. But now we uh, have a unified space station later. And then 1990, you may know uh, this, uh, this is US Japan agreement for satellite procurement, government satellite procurement. So that is the time of uh, Japan, uh, Japan, US Japan trade, trade conflict. Uh, so that is kind of uh, this agreement is uh, uh, to open Japanese uh, uh, government procurement, space pro uh, satellite procurement, open to the uh, international uh, bit international procurement. Uh, so that is uh, a kind of uh, no good for uh, 
uh, at that time, still Japanese satellite industry uh, not not strong enough for open uh, open com uh, open uh, com com competi competition with US or uh, bigger company. So uh, I, at this moment, we have to open basically uh, open uh, procurement from world war so this is uh, uh, this uh, influenced the japanese satellite uh, industry uh, industry uh, competitiveness so that is uh, after that uh, that kind of uh, limitation uh, into the basic space role. I, I will uh, explain later. So uh, this means I enter into <laughs> NASDA. I joined NASDA 1994. Uh, that it was the time of the success of H2 launch. Uh, our launch technology, firstly, uh, uh, ISAS, like uh, Professor Itogawa, this is original technology uh, from ISAS uh, University of Tokyo. This is still uh, come, uh, this is still uh, uh, to utilized as an Ypsilon lo launcher, a solid launcher. But for NASA side, at that time, I was NASA uh, separate agencies at, at, at that time. So I just proceed a solid launcher, but NASA uh, uh, imported technology from the US. Uh, US is so kind for uh, uh, transfer their technology of liquid launcher. And then, uh, but 1994, we uh, completed uh, uh, launcher, H2 launcher as domestic uh, technology, 100% domestic technology. So now we, uh, we, uh, we could uh, we uh, success uh, of uh, development of domestic technology launcher uh, by H2 at 1994, in 1994. And in 1995, uh, maybe US-Japan cross waiver agreement for space activities concluded. And this is the base uh, background of today's US-Japan framework, uh, space framework agreement. And so this is, we came into the uh, framework agreement baseline agreement. And, and then now is the time for Japan to uh, enter into launcher market, international market. So Japanese government amended the uh, NASA law to accommodate commercial launch in 1995. And uh, 1998, Eight. I was engaged in the study for uh, how to accommodate a commercial launch in, in NASA. At that time, NASA accommodate uh, a commercial launch. NASA uh, was asked to the company to launch uh, their satellite in commercial base, but the, the scheme changes later. And in 1998, after the World War II, uh, US invited uh, Russia to join space station. Uh, so uh, we need to uh, amend a space station agreement. So I was engaged in negotiation from Japan's Japanese side uh, for new IG, new international intergovernment agreement for space station. And then just after uh, ratification of ISS agreement in our diet, the Tepodon shock happened. The Tepodon shock, I mean the Tepodon, first Tepodon uh, missile, missile or launcher. Uh, and then I was, it was, it was a trigger for Japan to, uh, to, Starting with the uh, intelligent satellite that we so, so we call information gathering satellite. The project started by this this happening, <laughs> and then, but that is not uh, dealt uh, by JAXA because you uh, NASA because you, of this resolution. We cannot directly treat such kind of activity in NASA. So that is uh, a little bit, uh, sorry, a separate uh, project from NASA. 
uh, by government mission of uh, operation of information gathering satellite. And in 2003, uh, JAXA sta started. Uh, the, the NASDAQ ISAS 93 agencies merged into uh, JAXA. So, uh, you know that the first mark for aviation industry and the ISAS for research in the university as a university activity and NASDAQ for industry of space technology industry relation. And three agencies uh, merged into JAXA in 2003. And then 2008, uh, this role, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, this is a new stage in Japan, and not only uh, R and D, but also uh, uh, government uh, utilize the space space asset for their uh, activity. Not only R and D, uh, but also uh, many activity, including including uh, national security application. So, and then they established space development strategy headquarters headed by prime minister. As you may know, we have 2011, the big earthquake. So a little bit late, later, uh, Jack Salo amended to accommodate new task uh, set by uh, basic space law. So the amendment was 2012 uh, because we have a big earthquake and then we need time to, 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 uh, to prepare. So now uh, after that, the, there, are, there is a, uh, a new government uh, purpose for a, uh, space is one is uh, national security. So 2013, uh, US Japan Space Situation Awareness Agreement uh, concluded. And then 2016, uh, space activity law, uh, that, that is what I uh, uh, engaged in uh, drafting. Uh, space agency law is a licensing scheme for space business. Uh, because uh, JAXA is not commercial entity, JAXA is separate uh, entity from the government, but uh, it's uh, budget almost one hundred percent from the government. So uh, that you know the outer space treaty, the non governmental entity, they need the governmental authority. Uh, but uh, JAXA is not. Uh, uh, commercial entity, but uh, now we have many, many commercial players. So a uh, Japanese uh, government decided to, to uh, conclude space activity law for licensing regime for non-governmental space activities. And then I think that you may know very well that now we are time for after space station, uh, Artemis Accord, starting with eight countries and also the gateway, the moon uh, orbit base. And then um, there is a time for further exploration, but uh, we have uh, we have trouble with launcher, new launcher, Epsilon, uh, and then also H3 failure, but we are trying to resume that uh, failure and then now uh, waiting for uh, restarting the launcher. And then I think that today's topic, one topic is the uh, uh, Japanese space policy change is the uh, more and more uh, national security uh, request uh, requests from national security segment uh, to JAXA. So now, uh, last December, uh, new security policies uh, was decided by the Japanese government, and uh, which uh, consists of three documents: national security strategy, national defense strategy, defense build-up program, and then they uh, mentioning more cooperation from, uh, with JAXA, uh, between JAXA and the Ministry of Defense and the uh, Self-Defense uh, uh, Force. So I'm asking the Japanese government how or what they, uh, what they request, what government requests to JAXA to support because our JAXA's budget and then manpower are not increasing rapidly, but more and more, more and more, uh, activities, more and more requests from national security uh, field coming. So 
that is one reason I believe that these failures because we need we have more more and more tasks, but not not additional budget or not additional staffs. So that that is a, a kind of challenge nowadays. So uh, there are some discussion points may, maybe uh, you are interested in, and and one. I'm uh, concerning that that new Japanese national uh, uh, security policy. I I feel uh, we need more discussion at the diet level, but this document uh, uh, decided uh, by not by the cabinet by not not by the diet, uh, decided by the cabinet, and then in December. Uh, and the late date uh, reported at diet now. So I think the, uh, I think uh, that kind of very important document, important new policy should be firstly uh, discussed in diet, then decided by the cabinet to is the order is my, my opinion. So I mean, I'm uh, asking questions. The procedure is not good because we need, uh, we need to have uh, more and more uh, different opinion, and they finally decide uh, what we should do for uh, for more uh, national security budget. For how we uh, for what we uh, invest, uh, which field, which activity, and then um, this is a little bit of a different argument. So we. Uh, uh, in Japan, recent nowadays, so many strategy headquarters. And then under the strategic headquarters, uh, there are boards of specialists, but uh, there are no standard, no rules to who should be uh, selected as uh, specialists supporting, advisory, advising uh, to the government. So that is not such not so open system. So I, I'm ask, I'm arguing uh, government, we should be more, we should need, we should have more open discussion in uh, especially in the diet. And then uh, the possibility of taxation, tax increase is uh, now uh, because, you know, a huge budget uh, inclusion for national security uh, still uh, already decided. And then uh, it, it was uh, uh, followed by uh, 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 additional budget for education is now in the uh, this now under the discussion, but uh, that means maybe uh, inclusion of tax tax is coming. But uh, uh, that is again we I think we need a more uh, discussion uh, in the diet. So that is I'm <laughs> but I'm uh, questioning to uh, to the government and then. Uh, that is uh, one, mm, one thing, a very political uh, point is uh, now uh, Japan has new capability to counterattack to the enemies. So you know that the Article 9 of Japanese constitution, that law, is uh, basically we do not <laughs> uh, get into the war. We, we, uh, we just uh, uh, defending, not offense not offense, uh, but uh, 1995 Japanese government in, by the cabinet, by, not by the diet, uh, changed the interpretation of Article 9. And then uh, not only uh, uh, protecting uh, Japanese people, but also our alliance country like US, we do counter attack. So that is uh, kind of a little bit, uh, too much wider interpretation for Article Nine, I believe, and then, then, then now the decision by this uh, national security policy is to uh, actually uh, obtaining uh, the measures for self attack, that's so purchasing, the procuring, that kind of measure for uh, counter attack. So, so I think I feel we need more, uh, more. Uh, diet, more discussion, more uh, detailed discussion at the diet is necessary because this is a uh, very important decision, a tangible decision. So I think uh, more and more open discussion uh, necessary for such kind of change of the policy. 
The second point is uh, I feel I feel uh, a little bit unbalance between uh, the size of budget inclusion in the national security, huge inclusion, but uh, for education, not so. And uh, uh, such kind of balancing we should discuss more at the diet is my opinion. So I'm, uh, I'm arguing the government, we should uh, balance more, better balance between, of course, national security budget inclusion is very important, I agree. But the balance is a little bit, um, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't agree that balancing is, today's balancing in the uh, Japanese government is, um, so, uh, so the, if we see the contents of the inclusion on the budget, uh, not such uh, invest, big investment to high technology like uh, intelligence by the satellite or uh, uh, cyber or space or drone, such kind of new technology, not such major points in the uh, decided documents. So I think more, <laughs> uh, I think that the, the national uh, I think we should invest more for the high technology uh, for uh, for self defense. And then, uh, as I uh, as I explained, the education or uh, national welfare, the balancing of the budget is we should we should discuss. Third point is uh, uh, there is uh, I as I explained uh, three documents mentioning closer cooperation uh, between uh, Japanese Ministry of Defense or and Self Defense and JAXA. So uh, as you may know, uh, JAXA we have four uh, uh, authorizing ministries, but uh, uh, Ministry of Defense is not included as a authorizing ministry for to JAXA. So I think more clear governance uh, uh, necessary if uh, Ministry of Defense instruct JAXA or uh, order JAXA uh, some responsibility, we need a clear authority or maybe we need separate space agency uh, to support uh, national space activity uh, is another choice uh, because the uh, type of project uh, for R&D, uh, industrialization, industrialization and national security government activity, the uh, idea of taking risk or cost are very different. So uh, sometimes I think uh, if we uh, dedicate to uh, su support, uh, more and more uh, support uh, national activity, especially for national security, then it is very difficult for JAXA to take risk uh, for a new challenge. So sometimes I maybe one, one, one option is, uh, uh, one option is adding, uh, JMOD, I mean Japanese Ministry of Defense, as an authorizing ministry to JAXA, and then, then one unified space agency deal with all things. But maybe other options can be uh, to, to set separate space agency to support uh, national, uh, national government space activities, especially for national security. That is kind of just my personal idea, but uh, I think we should, uh, we should discuss uh, better governance for national security uh, space application, is my opinion. And then uh, basically, I think we need more vision and strategy for sustainable space industry. Uh, the one problem, one challenge is Japanese government system is very much vertical section. Section, yeah, yeah. That is uh, maybe in US too, but in Japan, uh, there are uh, very independent ministries. So that was, that, that's, it seems that is a reason why they need strategy headquarter to coordinate. But, uh, uh, but I feel in such case, uh, the governance become more national, um, become not clear. So 
uh, which mi ministry is responsibility responsibility is not clear. So that is, I think I I don't think it's such a good system, uh, especially in case of uh, uh, urgency. So uh, so uh, that is uh, one challenge in Jap uh, the scheme of uh, Japanese. Uh, uh, government, but uh, anyway, we need some uh, more strategy, more strategy or vision uh, to promote innovation or new venture. And DAPA system, the Japanese government are trying to introduce in Japan, but not successful at this moment. But we need some some uh, more investment uh, to uh, to basic science from the government, and then. Uh, and then nowadays Japanese industry, the not so comp com not uh, well competing with other company. So now our economy is uh, not so good. So we need uh, again we need strategy for industry international uh, uh, to getting more share international market share. And then uh, for such purposes, we need more uh, vision or strategy for commercialization or even privatization of today's government activities. And then uh, intellectual property strategy or uh, uh, technology standardization strategy is not so uh, strong in Japan. So we need to, to uh, think about more uh, Think about a better strategy for these uh, these things. So this point is uh, now the Japanese government by the three uh, documents for national security. Uh, now we uh, Japan now trying to uh, import uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, for uh, arms force, kind of uh, domestic produced arms force. Now there's only for uh, self-defense force in Japan, only in Japan, but now they are trying to import for alliance countries. So we need more rules, maybe safeguarding, safeguarding the technology rules like ITAR or more uh, better system if they want import uh, such items to uh, uh, to global society. And sixth point is uh, Scott always saying us, we need a security clearance, better security clearance system uh, for our global cooperation uh, because uh, in the national security activities are the global uh, alliance activities uh, for real time sh uh, information sharing. We need more better system for uh, security clearance is I, I I agree with the end. I, I'm uh, explaining, discussing in my party. <laughs> so sorry for my English is not not enough. Maybe so. Please uh, make a question uh, if you have any question. This is only in Japanese, but this is uh, my friend uh, cartoon writer uh, voluntarily uh, wrote for me. Uh, this is uh, essays. Uh, National security uh, three documents decided not the diet by the cabinet decided. And people saying, why it should be in the diet? And then, uh, the, you know, January, the Prime Minister Kishida coming to US and then uh, traveling to Europe. Hey, now we can purchase <laughs> your uh, many, many stuff from your countries and then uh, the foreign countries welcome that kind of inclusion of the budget. And then the people say, why uh, the diet or people explanation in the diet or explanation to the people should be fast, not from, uh, because no explanation to, to, to diet uh, to uh, people, then decide and then go to foreign country to explain. And then, then maybe the maybe uh, more tax, and then this is this similar situation uh, before World War II. So uh, we have to reform the kind of uh, policy political situation in Japan, and that that is kind of a character like uh, she. Not so long. And then we have to maintain that uh, space mother for uh, political reform. 
<laughs> so, so thank you for listening uh, my presentation. I'm sorry, my English is not enough. Uh, thank you for uh, listening me. Thank you. Take uh, lots of opportunities for good uh, for good questions. Here for this is sort of a tour. You got the Japanese uh, history. Um, the uh, let me let me look to the uh, look to the uh, audience first. Mm -hmm. uh, who wants to be so bold? Uh, you mentioned that uh, it would be worth promoting innovation, innovation through a, a uh, agency or some sort of organization like DARPA. Um, of course, MOD has ATLA. Uh, is there something within ATLA that could work on some of these developments, or is you know this this vertical stovepiping a lot worse across the entire government of Japan? I, I hope I can understand the question. Yeah, I hope I can understand your question uh, rightly. Uh, now, uh, Japanese government, Ministry of Defense, uh, um, started uh, uh, funding to the university. And then, but the university league uh, doesn't like that, didn't like that. Uh, because world, uh, during World War II, uh, many, many university researchers, uh, uh, not their uh, will, uh, they have to contribute to, for arms uh, researches. So Japanese uh, uh, university professors, uh, league, league, not individual league, uh, made a declaration and never get the budget from Minister of Defense. So that is one political discussion <laughs> in Japan. Uh, the, by the document, uh, I asked the Minister of Defense, uh, uh, because there are documents saying that we need more uh, research for national security purposes, and how they manage. And they say they will create new laboratory under Ministry of Defense. Uh, maybe it is one solution. There are professors who don't want to get the budget from national security segment, but there are still some professors who won't get money for their research, even from the uh, Ministry of Defense. So if the dedicated uh, research laboratory and the Ministry of Defense, then it's more clear that they can, they have, can have choice. Uh, so that is a Japanese solution, okay? I might add uh, uh, onto that. Um, actually, so within um, uh, Office of Secretary of Defense of her R&E, there is a program for s and outreach, you know, quantum computing, artificial intelligence, and so forth. And, and uh, many times, like with uh, NATO countries and so forth, that involves universities. And it's been a problem, of course, involving Japanese universities, you know, because of domestic opposition at the university level. So even if the individual university professors might be interested, the faculty in general are, are opposed to military uh, sort of involvement. Um, what's also happened is, though, is that the uh, Japanese sort of science council has looked at a number of these areas and agrees that some of the technologies are dual use. So uh, things like quantum, quantum cryptography or uh, artificial intelligence or are not by nature military technology, but dual use technologies. And, and so there's some, some movement at the science council level for you know, allowing uh, that kind of re dual use research to go ahead. The interesting irony and into the, the history uh, that uh, uh, was presented, is that uh, the original uh, university professors, University of Tokyo, who did the first pencil rockets, uh, were very much nationalists. You know, they they did not want to be dependent upon other countries. So, uh, even though uh, the uh, academic faculties were anti-military, they were also still uh, pro nat They're still nationalists, and they wanted Japan to have autonomous, you know, capabilities. So you see, you see both those tensions going on back and forth in in Japanese uh, uh, universities. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank, thank you very much for your presentation. I learned a lot. 
And yeah, thank you. So uh, my question is not really a question that I want you to explain us a little bit about Japanese industry in space, the space industry, what they want or what they are has done or, or how the polit policies or politics like you are thinking about which direction J Japanese industry should go, for example, like uh, to compete with American industries or more go to niche, niche right? Like uh, only Japan can do. Uh, that kind of things, uh, if you can mention a little bit, that would be great. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, actually, how to get to uh, competition uh, is, I think that anyway, niche is something uh, because if we can find some niche, great niche, that makes com competi competitive, competitive. And so in Japan nowadays, uh, um, especially for in space field, not such big budget. Uh, so um, tendency is uh, find a good niche, like Hayabusa. You know that in Japan, uh, we basically would like to uh, produce manned launcher. Of course, our Japanese uh, uh, specialist, techn engineer, I wanted to start uh, uh, start development of manned space launch, but the Japanese government didn't decide, didn't in invest uh, because that is uh, that needs more budget, and then maybe it includes political risk in case of failure. So they never. Uh, they never uh, decided for uh, starting, initiating uh, man launcher, unfortunately. So we have to just uh, focusing in unmanned activities, like unmanned uh, technology for HTV or something like that. And then um, Hayabusa also, uh, we, they, especially that was in ISAS project, uh, university side. In JAXA, uh, uh, NASA side, uh, the industrialization, uh, bigger budget. ISAS side for research, unfortunately, not such big, big budget. So they, uh, uh, they sold. Uh, so then asteroid is something they can become world uh, number one. So um, one, uh, I, I see my, my, my view is uh, JAXA uh, space in Japan, um, thinking about niche that not the big and competing, not, not nowadays, maybe it used to be, but nowadays niche, thinking about niche, that is one reason is the lack, lack of uh, budget. <laughs> can I ask for a question? I can wait. I can wait. I can. Okay. It's okay, thank you. Thank you, yeah, uh, that's great. Um, but the problem of uh, going to niche uh, mm -hmm. area is that you have to think about the dependency and autonomy balance, right? That if you go to only niche, you, ha you have to depend on other countries uh, for the critical part. So I wonder what you think about the mm -hmm. balance of the, the freedom or autonomy and mm -hmm. dependency on other countries. Uh, could you give me your idea? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So that is uh, uh, that what we are uh, trying to find is niche and critical technology. If only niche <laughs> to be um, in, uh, dependent on, but if it is niche and then critical technology, then they have to depend on our technology. So what we are trying to find is niche and Take uh, uh, sure, no, critical technology. That's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, uh, Steve Jordan Tomaszewski with the Space Industries Association. Um, uh, kind of building on that last question, um, I had a question about your uh, point up there about promoting commercialization and privatization of governmental activities. Uh, could you give us some examples of certain areas that you think are, are good for um, kind of that, that commercialization and privatization of yeah. what, what some examples of uh, what that would look like? Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, totally my personal view, not to the government or not just not to JAXA or government opinions. One is uh, the space station. Uh, I more than 10 years ago, I'm my opinion was to privatize oper the operation of a space station. I think that US start first. And at that time, I proposed in JAXA personally, we should privatize together with NASA 
because the portion, the bigger portion, then better uh, condition for privatization, bidding, better, better uh, proposal coming. So if we privatize our small portion, Kibo uh, module, uh, afterwards, the condition is not so good. So I think my personal view is space station now, uh, too late maybe, but uh, now the time to privatize. It's my personal opinion. And that because we have to, can shift the uh, budget to uh, new, new, new activities. And then one other is maybe a satellite or launcher, uh, the, the, the part of uh, former NASA trying was for industrialization. Now in Japan, two satellite, two major satellite company, uh, prime satellite company and two major launch countries. Now we could success the industrialization of launch and satellite. So I think we should do more frontier activity rather than uh, <laughs> uh, the similar activities uh, the, uh, for industrialization. Maybe we, uh, we uh, so like NASA, the space shuttle, I think that change was great. Uh, the, now, uh, after the uh, accident of space shuttle, uh, NASA or US government changed the behavior uh, to be customer. That is, uh, the, that is uh, the Japanese government not good at. I think we, JAXA, and then also the government itself should be good customer for industry. So that is foreseeable, uh, uh, better for foreseeable <laughs> market, anchor tenancy market for the industry company is uh, important. Uh, in Japan, uh, we try to uh, build up new technology, uh, giving money to support, but no market for them. Uh, so uh, like launcher or satellite too, they're not procuring, not procuring the satellite, just we can utilize the launch satellite and then putting that kind of procurement project budget for the uh, new uh, frontier activity. It's my personal, personal <laughs> uh, idea. Yes. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kamo. I work in the Brazil Tech Chamber of Commerce and I am originally from Houston. Um, over there, we have a whole debate about doing business in space. Oh, yeah. And we always talk about how the international space politics can affect the business they're going to do for the future, especially in the Leo economy. Mm -hmm. So, one of the questions that I have for you is what do you believe that should be the next steps in terms of international space politics to develop our international Leo economy, especially in the future? International space politics. What should be the next step in developing space policy to develop the space economy? The Leo economy, yeah. Okay, global, global economy or national economy? The Leo economy. The Leo global. or the corporate economy. Yeah. Ah. No, no, so a bit to economy. Mm. Yeah, actually, as an anchor tenant on a Japanese space flight. Yeah, actually, uh, NASA, our uh, US government uh, already shift uh, as a customer for low Earth orbit, uh, is my, my understanding. Uh, I think the J JAXA and Japanese government uh, not so much uh, industry in Japan yet, uh, but uh, maybe it's uh, one challenge we should think about. Uh, not uh, shifting like US, uh, becoming uh, become not the operator, but but the uh, uh, customer uh, to purchase the service from uh, private entity. But uh, maybe the maturity of industry you in US in Japan are a little bit different still. Well, uh, you know, I think that's that's correct and. One of the, the transitions, uh, I think, going on is um, U.S. industry, of course, was very used to like building whatever the government told them to build, the DOD, NASA, whatever, build this. And we'll do. Same capacity building happened in Japan. Government says build this, build the capability. 
the, the shift that's been going on in the U.S. and which is not yet there in Japan is where the companies are are more on the leading edge of deciding what makes sense. This is where the government is saying, well, what do you companies think might make a market or might be worthwhile? And you know, the companies are going, you're asking us. You know, we, we build whatever you say. No, no, no. What what makes sense for you, and what would you put money into? And then, then the government then becomes more of a supporting element rather than the leading element. A critical, but 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 in, in a slightly different position. And so, um, one of the things I think may be happening to your question about low Earth orbit um, is uh, uh, is thinking about whether Japanese companies will become investors either in US projects or in their own projects with multinational investment. So it's about syndicated financing from multiple different sources that might make sense. Um, and so the government will still probably be the gigantic customer, maybe 80%, but that might mean 20% is non-government, you know, which would be a, a, certainly a shift from where we are now. So it's, it's this change in roles that we're still struggling with and Japanese industry is also starting to grapple with um, one uh, one difference is uh, in japan in japan uh, the uh, business to utilize uh, services or information from the satellite not so much uh, so still uh, in japanese space industry to produce the satellite is the main business so uh, if the uh, Many many services uh, utilizing space asset. There are more needs for utilize satellite. Then maybe better. Uh, maybe the business uh, is different. Uh, and, um, so still, Japanese government uh, trying to uh, support manufacturing business of the satellite. So maybe now the time to change uh, to be users. Uh, for uh, promote uh, utilization business. business. Mm -hmm. I mean, very much as you know from sort of the economics, money is in services. If you think about having an airline, you know, having a national airline capability is utterly critical. But owning a national airline is like really a terrible business. And building aircraft is sort of okay. Um, but the real money is in the services. I'm looking at the Boeing guy, you know, I'm like, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> Um, so, so on one hand, there's that your economy dependency sort of point. And, and so the focus of the Japanese government will say on building manufacturing things as opposed to evaluated services, you know, has, has, is also a sort of a switch that's, that's going on. There's a question in the back also. Uh, my question is about, uh, potential avenues, for Japanese civil space cooperation. Uh, yeah, I was wondering, other than the United States, are there any other countries that you, in your opinion, visualize as being good opportunities for J Japanese bilateral uh, civil space cooperation? Country, uh, we have many. Uh, corporate international cooperation, not only, but U.S. has. I think the U.S. Uh, the long history uh, of collaboration. Uh, the longest is the U.S., I, I believe, because the uh, we uh, uh, U.S. Uh, 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 kindly uh, transfer uh, its uh, technology to Japan. And that is a very uh, important uh, start for us uh, to develop our uh, technology and industry. But uh, uh, not not only US. We have many many cooperation between Germany or France or of course Asian country like India. So we have many bilateral agreement. Not only US but also other countries. Uh, what national? Is it okay or what kind of? Yeah, yeah. I was hoping you could, could you maybe give an opinion on the like you visualize any uh, opportunities for newer uh, space partnerships in different countries? Mm -hmm. uh, one, one thing JAXA is trying to is to share the opportunity of utilization of space station with other countries. Uh, so uh, because space station uh, from Asia, only one country can join. And so uh, JAXA offering the 
chance of utilization of our Kibo module uh, we, uh, for uh, the offer that chance, uh, especially for Asian country, you know, we have APL staff, uh, the, the forum for Asian Pacific region space cooperation, but not only Asia Pacific country, but also the uh, collaboration with United Nations, we are fully open uh, uh, offering uh, opportunity to utilize uh, Kibo module space station. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you for appearing here. Uh, I'm Jeffrey Traberman. I have a question on military uh, space cooperation with growing threats in the region from North Korea and China. And I know our chief of space operations just visited uh, last fall in Japan. Can you talk a little bit about the view in the diet about military space cooperation, mm -hmm. uh, international military space cooperation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And now Japanese government uh, also understanding that space is very important uh, segment for national security. And then so now, like US-Japan SSC agreement, uh, now we we have the corporate we we cooperate to gathering information and sharing information. Then we need national sec security clearance, more strongest security clearance. But uh, now Japanese self-defense force established a space self-defense team or something. And then that is, uh, I think the one model is in the US, you have the space force, space. Like, yeah, yeah. And then uh, now, uh, so this, but uh, the, pro the maybe challenge is uh, uh, military defense, uh, military uh, self-defense force, uh, it, uh, of course, they do not have uh, knowledge to operate a satellite or uh, uh, how to utilize uh, space asset for national security. So they ask JAXA or our prof professionals to support them. So uh, so uh, in the diet, uh, of course, LDP people very much strong uh, support uh, for space uh, utilization for national security. And the, our, our party also, um, especially I'm I'm uh, experiencing this, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, yeah, 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 I'm 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 arguing Japanese because now Japanese government a huge budget for a new budget for uh, national security. They are trying to purchase uh, arms from the United States, other countries. Uh, but I think uh, one thing we should think about is U.S.-Japan alliance, and then um, in East Asia part uh, for U.S. It's uh, not they are major areas uh, to gather information because in, now you have the uh, now we, you share the you have the uh, the effort in Ukraine or other other East Asia many many places with US is uh, 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 covering and so what I'm proposing to my party or to the government we have to uh, share the uh, the Japanese role uh, in East Asia, uh, intelligence, more effort, more investment for information gathering, uh, intelligence is better than just purchasing uh, arms from the uh, from foreign countries. So, is it okay? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, if I uh, might uh, sort of add something to that. Uh, one thing that happened relatively recently uh, was uh, a, um, a drone owned by the Japan Coast Guard uh, was then used to feed information uh, to the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Forces. Technically, not terribly new, um, but from a um, policy innovation, uh, quite a big deal because the Japanese Coast Guard is very explicitly a non-military organization. And so the idea that there's a cooperative, cooperative arrangement between the Coast Guard feeding information to the maritime self-defense forces, you know, that's really, really new. Um, uh, it, it may be a more sensitive point, which I would never ask a diet member to comment on, um, is, uh, is a, a joint operation. Space is very much joint across all the services. And so the uh, Japan self-defense forces have created uh, uh, space units. They, they have some electronic warfare units and so forth, but they're attached to individual members of the self-defense forces. 
And yet, when you exercise electronic warfare, cyber, space, it's very much joint across all the services. Um, but the Japanese Stealth Defense Forces are very much like a pre-Goldwater-Nichols kind of military. They're still very much within these sort of separate silos. But but space and cyber and electronic warfare cuts across all those areas. So my, again, very much personal opinion is that you'll see space as it tries to be used in national security will uh, force, drive, catalyze, whatever word you want to use, uh, more attention to joint operations among the Japanese self-defense forces than you've seen to date, because that's just going to be the nature of what they have to deal with. And this will be this will be a new thing. And, and uh, um, I, I hope there's some discussion in, in the diet. Um, uh, sorry to go along, but there, there's a thing called the guidelines for the defense of Japan, which go into very specific detail about what Japan can do and say within its constitutional limits. And, uh, and those are debated. There has not, to my knowledge, been a debate about space mm -hmm. as part of the defense guidelines. Mm -hmm. So we've discussed replenishment, we've discussed aircraft operations, ground self-defense forces, you know, and, and again, people all want to be clear, they're all staying within the law. Space has not yet matured to the point where there's been a diet level discussion of, of, uh, of that. I, I suspect that will happen at some point, but it hasn't happened yet. Hello, thank you very much for your talk. Um, it's my understanding so far, international cooperative agreements such as the Artemis Accords have been mostly focused on civil space. Mm -hmm. if, Japan, if, the Japan, if JAXA were to have more involvement with the Ministry of Defense, is there a concern that it may impact Japan's or JAXA's ability to um, have, create more uh, completely civil oriented partnerships or is that less of a concern? Before uh, answering your question, I would like to add one more information I just uh, forgot to uh, explain. Uh, this resolution, a narrower, uh, uh, narrower uh, activities in, in space agency uh, rather than uh, allowed constitutional law. Uh, so that means uh, NASA uh, cannot collaborate with Ministry of Defense or Self-Defense Force, but that kind of limitation changed uh, uh, by basic space law. And uh, not only uh, becoming JAXA, but the basic space law uh, clearly mentioning uh, under constitutional law, we can do uh, for national security application. Uh, so, uh, so now uh, JAXA can collaborate with uh, Ministry of Defense or even maybe self-defense. Self-defense force are a little bit uh, too straight, I see. But uh, anyway, so, but they, we, uh, they started, uh, government asked JAXA to start with dual research together with Ministry of Defense. So that is one step to know each other. But nowadays, uh, nowadays, this, um, nowadays, uh, Ministry of Defense, uh, uh, government, part, government uh, division for intelligence ask JAXA for co a kind of management or procurement for their satellite or operation support. So uh, in such case, uh, it, it takes uh, much national effort or um, manpower to support such kind of things. So uh, one, one uh, influence to JAXA is uh, lack of resources uh, uh, for our original activity of R&D. And then other is, um, that is maybe we should, I should ask um, Scott, uh, uh, if we become dual agency, uh, that, that is uh, that caused some difference between international cooperation with in the civil war, <laughs> civil space activities. Uh, so I I, um, I I don't think that there would necessarily be a impact. I think this distinction on non-military and military is really a Japanese domestic, you know, political issue they have to deal with. Um, a a counterexample is say the French space agency, Kness. 
uh, mostly a civilian space agency, but if the director general for armaments needs something, you know, they, they go ask Kness because there's one, one space agency because most countries don't have the, the, the resources as we did to create two space, you know, space programs, you know, most people just have one, um, and put it all in the military or something. We did both military and still. So, um, so th I think the question here is as, Japan does do more national security things with space. They have essentially this crown jewel, JAXA, which is you know quite a outstanding organization. But it's being asked to do more to support security side, which again is normal. The Japanese, the nation needs the help, um, and it's not just a matter of money, but it's a matter of you know how many trained people do you have, how many really good scientists, program managers, and and if you put them on one project, that's you're not putting them on another project. And so um, I think JAXA probably needs more people, they need more training, um, but it's still, I think, an open question. And I think this is what the diet uh, is, is gonna struggle with, is do you strengthen JAXA to do more or do you lay out a plan for the, more, the, for the, the Ministry of Defense to build more of its own space acquisition? You know, how long have some of us been saying we need space acquisition professionals in the Defense Department? Uh, well, you know, other countries have, you know, the same same kind of problem. So where, where do you put it? And then who has who has accountability for it? Would you be able to touch on Australia's relationship with Japan? Australia. Australia? Australia, and where you see that heading in the future, given the agreement signed in 2020 between JAXA and the Australian space agency? Mm. Yeah, maybe our colleague know better, but uh, not such, uh, because Australia like Hayabusa landing, uh, there are some uh, point uh, cooperation. Uh, we are uh, supported by Australian government uh, for uh, landing the capital of Hayabusa or but Australian agency of course established and then um, and I don't see a now uh, ongoing cooperation a continuous cooperation between Australia and you take this I know also that, that we have a multilateral cooperation with the quad for the underquad scheme so that we have uh, some work in collateral meeting with in the field of space. So under this scope, so that we are cooperating with the, uh, the, the, the art observation of by utilizing the, the satellite. Uh, so that we are now uh, cooperating with the uh, activity with both ways. There's a question online. Mm -hmm. For the online audience, can you elaborate on the collaboration with the upcoming Gateway and Artemis missions, more specifically in Japan's international hospitals? Uh, you mean the corporate gateway and yeah. Artemis and both Japan? How many seats will Japan get? <laughs> <laughs> and what can you do to get more seats? Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, uh, we hope the Japanese astronaut can go to the moon uh, by this cooperation, and uh, hopefully, uh, next to US is our hope. And uh, we are uh, discussing with uh, NASA and uh, US colleagues. And then that is, you know, the space state like space station, that is not uh that is kind of bothering butter issue. So what we can butter, what we can contribute is crucial. And then so we have to restart the uh launch uh, H3 uh, development uh, because reliable launch system to the space station is something we uh, uh, contributed to the space station and the US, uh, 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 we hope US uh, relying on our uh, transportation uh, services. So H3 and all uh, uh, collabor in collaboration with Toyota, uh, we are now de developing rover, uh, lunar rover, so that kind of contribution, we hope uh, US or international partner count uh, great and then uh, give a uh, chance to Japanese astronaut uh, to go to the moon, hopefully next to US astronaut is okay. Yes. Yes. Well, um, when uh, uh, last administration, when this, Question came up. Uh, I, I I said it was really very simple, and I, and I think my 
current government colleagues have the same feeling is uh, the barter arrangement. So you help us get to the gateway, we help you get to the gateway. You help us get to the lunar surface, we help you get to the lunar surface. You know, it's it's a team team effort. But I, I think Japan has a a, a secret uh, niche technology uh, that's very critical. Uh, that is in the pressurized rover. Only the Japanese astronaut has the key. <laughs> <laughs> he only he can drive it. Thank you. Thanks, so, so that is uh, the background of my argument of the the balancing of the investment, uh, not only national security. But we need more investment for R and D, uh, science, technology. So that it, that is uh, easy. Uh, that is uh, that can make uh, Japanese contribution to space station and get to uh, Artemis or even to the United Nations. I just uh, uh, visited the United Nations in New York, and the same problem. Uh, our uh, economy is shrinking, and then the yen is very weak. So. Uh, we have to think about uh, which segment of government activity better balance to investment. So uh, only national security, death. so that is, uh, we need more discussion. We need more investment to R&D, uh, frontier activity, uh, the cooperation uh, with international partners. I'd like to ask a, a, a question. I'm talking promoting commercial commercial space. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that JAXA should be authorized specifically to do, or is that something that MEX at a higher level should do, or is that something METI should mm -hmm. do? If, if I'm thinking about the governance and coordination of commercial promoting commercial space in Japan, what ministry should have the lead for that, or is it something that mm -hmm. several ministries should do? <laughs> and if so, who coordinates? Yeah. My understanding is, of course, uh, as a space agency, uh, we are trying to uh, support uh, industry or commercial activities. Uh, that is new uh, JAXA task uh, uh, under, uh, uh, but uh, JAXA, uh, when the time of JAXA uh, started, 2003, we have new JAXA, uh, New JAXA law and uh, 2012, we amended JAXA law. Then the, we have new uh, responsibility to support the commercial activities in the industry. And then we have now four mini authorizing ministry. And then basically uh, four, uh, the, the uh, authorization of whole activity of JAXA is mainly by the mixed. And then, uh, and then, and uh, so much the ministry for telecommunication, basically for telecommunication R&D, but uh, the, may, may, mainly these two ministry uh, have the big authority to JAXA, but there are two uh, new authority, authorizing ministry. It is cabinet office and also minister of economy. And then they do have the authority uh, uh, additionally to that kind of support for industry. Economic security? Economy, economy, economy. Economy, economy. economy. Uh, because uh, like uh, METI, me, METI, mm -hmm. uh, Ministry for Economy, Trade, Trade Ministry, has the <laughs> one point uh, also, also, authorizing authority to JAXA is uh, support for uh, commercial utilization. Uh, and the METI, met, mixed and uh, Ministry of uh, Telecommunication have authority for hold activity, but there are uh, point authorization uh, authority from METI is for uh, support for uh, utilization and also cabinet office application. These two points, so, so that means it, for this activity by JAXA, there are uh, several ministry to, also, also to, to instruct to JAXA. But there are another uh, independent activity in METI or cabinet office, for their own activity for commercial, commercial promotion, commercialization. Okay, so, so nobody in the US should complain about interagency coordination. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe time, maybe two more questions. Thank you so much, it's been really wonderful. Um, I was wondering if you have any sense if uh, Japanese industry 
you know, as they start to develop these technologies, if they'd be interested in working with U.S. or other international uh, industry and companies as well. Okay. Just a moment. One second. Yeah. So, yeah, I do think Japanese industry would be open to working with U.S. or other international companies to help develop some of these mm -hmm. technologies. You mean the industry? Yes. I, uh, I think they are very open to accommodate or uh, invite uh, foreign, uh, foreign specialists to work, especially in ventures, small ventures. Uh, in Japan, uh, not the flexibility of human resources. The specialists uh, mainly in JAXA or big uh, uh, prime companies like Mitsubishi or something. And then in Japan, lifetime employment. So uh, it's not so many uh, of uh, people change the company. So the new ventures have always have the, the whole, more so all the ventures have the problem of human resources. So ice space or many, many small ventures are more than welcome from <laughs> foreign uh, engineer uh, professionals. There are many, many foreigners working in, especially in uh, space ventures in Japan. Big company, so-so, mm, but uh, uh, because of that background, uh, especially in Japanese new space ventures, there are many, many foreign Employee. Yeah, that's Okay, and uh, anybody? Bruno? Oh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, Bruno, this is with Disney Scholar. What is the Japanese policy view or the perspective of evolution on the topic of space traffic management? Space traffic management. Uh, uh, now, uh, if uh, not only for the item of space traffic management, if uh, I can focus on space debris, is okay? Yes. Thank you, sorry. Not so uh, clear. Uh, my understanding is not a clear vision for space traffic for all, but for space debris, uh, we, we established space activity law. Uh, that is one regulation under this law is uh, the licensing and uh, the application necessary uh, for uh, applicator, <laughs> the, the, the company who apply to this license, and this is, uh, it, it is responsible for them to show uh, the, the measure for space debris. So that is one thing uh, the reviewed by the government to, uh, to, to give the license. So uh, you know that the space debris uh, it's unfortunate, it is very difficult for uh, set uh, uh, international rules, you know, by, because, because of the uh, consensus program in United Nations uh, Committee, it's very difficult to make obligation, legal obligation uh, for uh, each, for a global level. Uh, but in Japan, we have the uh, space activity law saying that the space debris regulation uh, basically, the United Nations, you know, the United Nations documents of space debris based uh, regulation is necessary uh, when, whenever a uh, company apply to the license. Is it okay? And that's, and that's very much similar to uh, what happens uh, for FCC licenses. So if you come in and get an FCC license, uh, there will be a requirement to meet UN orbital debris mitigation guidelines that were adopted adopted by consensus, but but absolutely correct that there is no agreement on some transnational taxing or regulatory authority. It's all enforced at the national national level. Right. And then one thing I think I feel very happy as a result of this uh, agreement. I was a negotiator at the time of five or six years ago. At that time, no mentioning for space debris, but final draft uh, containing uh, between US and Japan uh, uh, abide by the guideline of space debris and also the COSPA policy. So that is great uh, to have. The, I think that good model, uh, they are uh, jointly uh, de declaring that we should uh, uh, so abide by the rule. Global, and even though it is solid uh, legal, a responsibility in the global level, but anyway, U.S. Japan government uh, abide by the guideline for space, in, uh, UN space debris guideline, and also COSPA policy for planetary protection. So that is, I think, the great point of this 
US Japan <laughs> agreement. Well, with that, uh, we're at, uh, at time, and uh, please thank our speaker for one.